Well, thank you, Steve Keeter. I am just, I almost don't want to get my hopes up for this little Facebook uh, page that I just put together on a whim, but I, 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 I almost don't have any breath. It's almost like I went down the first hill from a roller coaster and I'm trying to catch my breath because this little Facebook site currently has members that include Steve Keeter, Joe Watson, and Ferdinand, and a friend of mine from, uh, that began a friendship from Virginia and has moved to Arizona and had been friends with Mark, uh, my late husband. And um, if that's not the most ragtag group of um, people, I, it, I, I, I'm just beside myself. Uh, now, of course, I have the most squeaky chair. I'll try to stay still, but, um, sometimes, you know, in order to, to do something, start something, get something going, it can sometimes be the easiest, most simplest thing thing and um could this really be happening um you know uh it i i already you know had mentioned this that uh 10 or more years this didn't seem to be able to uh, take place. There were platforms such as Ning, there were attempts, and uh, so I almost, you know, I want to manage my expectations, but wouldn't it be something? So, okay, let's Let's just go with it. So Steve um, did a really fantastic video. And how do you measure fantastic? Well, in the way I'm seeing things, and I think that the way a lot of us who do these types of videos, we measure it in, in the same way, that they are just kind of ordinary and we love that kind of thing so uh, it just tickles me to no end so the topic happens to be relationships i i, I would have been game to jump on the bandwagon of just about anything that anybody brought up. Uh, but um, I, I'm going to just jump on what Steve brought up. Um, so the, the text that he was talking about that would, had been posted on Facebook was... Um, I think it said, I'm not, I'm not giving you a hard time based on anything that you did wrong. I'm just setting, setting my boundaries. And so I said, yeah, that's why I will be alone for the rest of my life. Um, so the way that that the way that I processed that text was uh, that what I've been finding in my life as I get older is that you know earlier earlier in life I thought that you could 
mold a husband. I thought that you could ask, ask them to do things a different way um, and make very significant changes to their personality. And I'll just make up some examples to keep people anonymous. So um, I'll, I'll say, for instance, um, you know, football is a complete waste of time for your weekends. I think you could, I think you should completely uh, stop your interest in football. And instead, we should use that time more pro productively and you should start knitting with me. Okay. You know, um, and it's, it's clear uh, that that doesn't work. Um, so, um, and then even if you take something very small, if you use an example, let's say about being on time. That see that seems like it's something that should be able to be corrected. You know, you just simply say, you know, that's annoying for you not to be on time. You know, can you just make a note of it that it may not have bothered your previous girlfriend? But that's something that is particularly annoying to me. So can you kind of uh, put that up as a priority? And uh, it may not make sense to you, but can you try to put that up there as a priority? You know, um, and if if you consider the relationship to be a little, to require a little bit of work, you know, and if I also require uh, or accept that relationships are a little bit of work, then I will also do similar things, uh, especially when they are not huge types of personality changes and I'll do similar things. Um, well, you know, when I have noticed that even small things seem to be really ingrained in a person's personality to where it's just a constant struggle. It's like swimming against the stream of a river to always need to, you know, try to uh, reverse a trend in somebody's personality. So you're, so then it seems like you're then left to just decide. Um, and in older life, um, when you're not going to be having any more kids, and when you don't necessarily need them to live in your house in order to split the cost. Um, then, um, you know, you don't necessarily have to, 
Oh, I lost my screen again. Then you can, um, you can choose to still keep the relationship going, but you can set certain boundaries to the relationship. You can decide that it's never going to turn into a marriage and that it's never going to turn into a live together situation. Um, you know, because, you know, he might drive you crazy. Um, you know, and there's, there's couples that they don't share a bedroom, maybe because of snoring, maybe because of tossing and turning. Maybe somebody wears one of those sleep, sleep apnea CPAP machines. You know, maybe somebody wants to watch TV into the later hours of the night uh, or just uh, maybe you end up living in different houses. So um, maybe somebody likes to sleep with a dog. So, I, you know, in in older ages uh you can i've i've kind of discovered that uh you don't have to really pick a traditional lifestyle um even if even if you do decide that you want to have some form of a relationship. You don't have to necessarily throw the baby out with the bathwater, but you've set up more boundaries than ever before. So it's a mediocre type of relationship almost to the point where it's almost a friendship or something so um, so yeah I I I kind of have the, the jury is out with me and as certain situations come up, what I'm finding myself doing is that I'll just put up a brand new boundary. So if I'm finding that I'm getting like a nag about something, like like why are why are you not hearing from your kids? Um, well, there's a real easy solution for for that. Um, suddenly, I am no longer sharing that information anymore. Know, suddenly I've decided that there's going to be a blackout um, from me you know when questions get asked about oh who'd you hear from today or whatever I don't know I I may just not hear the question I may just, whoopsie, whoopsie daisy, I, I may just change the topic, I, I may give some sort of nonsensical answer. Um, you know, I, I, I have found, I've found that I can actually do certain things that other people have sometimes 
done uh, in my direction sometimes. Um, they've just chosen to bypass some of my questions and it's uh, not really a mean thing. It's like uh, uh, I, I can't think of any one specific example, but uh, sometimes um, sometimes probably well, in the vast amount of chit chat that people do in life, um, you know, I sometimes, let's say, assume that people might want to be private about, let's say, money or how much they pay for their, their house on a mortgage, how much they get paid for their uh, salary. I might assume this or that um, and never ask them those types of questions, but I may uh, just have casually asked them, uh, what does your spouse do for a living or something, you know? And especially when you get close to DC, uh, sometimes they change the subject about that and don't end up answering the question. Um, so, um, so, you know, sometimes there's just reasons that you just, you just couldn't have, could not have known that you were asking a question that you shouldn't have asked. And so the person just, you know, they just kind of steered you off into another path and, you know, uh, they just managed to do it and it was done discreetly and so, you know, nobody's feathers likely got ruffled and that was that. Um, and, you know, I, I do know, I do know that I sometimes took, I sometimes took note of it, but I thought, oh, well, that was, that was a little interesting, but, oh, oh, all right. Um, but I haven't, uh, I have never exactly uh, done that as really, especially with a significant other. I haven't really, uh, I'll say, hidden information. I've usually been kind of an open book, um, but when things end up coming back at me in not so savory of a, of a way, then I've decided that they didn't really honor the information that I gave them in the first place, they kind of corrupted the information that I gave them in casual conversation, um, and they kind of uh, twisted it up just to throw in some negativity for no good reason, and just mess with it and uh, you know 
play with it and just, I don't know, mess with it for some reason. So, um, and, uh, I lost my screen again. Um, so, you know, there, I think the first time that something like that happened, I, I wasn't ready for it. And so I, you know, I kind of looped around with it and, you know, went, well, you know, what do you mean? And, and that's not really the case. And, and then I said, okay, now this is just, this is causing me to, um, you know, participate in a conversation that was cre created out of nothing. Uh, it was something that was added to the universe out of nothing. It's like as if, uh, it's like as if a, a scoop of beach sand was picked up and thrown out there and some kind of um, matter was some plasma, some matter, some, some creation was uh, created almost into a living, breathing uh, thing um, that took shape and took form that I was addressing the, the it, the thing, the problem, the situation to be discussed and solved and debated and, and, you know, the, you know, the, what, what is there to be done about the it? And there was no it, there was no thing, there was no situation, there was no issue, there was no anything. And so I realized that um, I was able to stop it cold by um, drawing a boundary, by just completely closing off conversation, not giving any response, no answers, no nod of the head, no blink of the eye, no eyeball to eyeball contact, no, no, no nothing, no, no, no indication that I had an, an emotional response, no, nothing. Um, uh, when he brought up even the most innocent sounding question, because I learned that, uh, there, and, it could have even could have even theoretically at that moment been an innocent question did you hear from so and so but that would have been just the beginning of the de detective work and it would have then been added up together and then it would have eventually been uh, 
the lump sum in which would have then been then presented as evidence and it would have then been that thing that blob that thing that was you know um uh you know and um Uh, and this right here, what I'm doing right now, right now is what is kind of case in point is that this is kind of a true life example of it's the energy that I'm building and I'm showing and it's like, no. And um, a person who actually lives in your house, who um, has all the more opportunity to, um, to do this, you know, this is one example. Um, I mean, another example is that um, uh, I can choose to turn off the TV and turn off the news. But a person living in your house may want to turn on the TV and listen to the news, even though, you know, I have chosen to put myself on a on a news break but a person living in your house who wants the news going and then wants to comment and then wants to add extra drama to the news and then wants to talk about wants to exaggerate the news to Pretty soon, money will not have any value, and pretty soon, um, I don't know, California should, you know, just be chipped off the edge of the United States, and, uh, yeah, um, So, um, so yeah, it's kind of nice when, um, uh, you can have two houses and preferably, uh, you can have your own set of friends and he can have his own set of friends and they can allow him to talk about all of that kind of all of those types of topics that he wants to talk about and get it all off his chest and um uh yeah but you know, when I was when I was married, you know, I freely, of course, you, I was married, and we had joint joint finances and things, um, so there were not very many boundaries. But certainly in a dating situation, um, I do not. Um, you know, Hillary has an expression, open kimono. Um, so I certainly do not go open kimono with my finances with um, with most people that I date. Now, it is funny that uh, there was one exception to that. Um, uh, and I have no regrets for having... Uh, talked about my finances with one particular guy 
uh, that I knew from uh, 19 years old. And um, I have no regrets whatsoever um, of having talked about my finances with him. Um, I just somehow, I mean, he, I had a lot of, um, I suspected that I was going to lose my screen right now. I had a lot of um, relationship issues with him, but uh, I just, I just had a gut feeling that he was perfectly fine to talk about finances with. Just he had, he had a background in those types of things, so I just felt like he was good to cons consult with, like that. So there's some exceptions. Um, but, um, uh, and maybe that will be the topic of another video, how, um, different people come along and, um, men or women, and you can get a sense from different people, um, yeah, because I have uh, a couple of women friends who I can talk finances with because um, we are in a similar financial situation. Um, and so I can talk finances with them um, uh, pretty easily. And... Um, and it's not always a trust issue. It's not as though I think necessarily that anybody's going to try to, you know, offer me like a wonderful, great opportunity to buy land in China or something. But um, uh, some people that, um, some people that are not in your same situation uh they just would not want to talk finances with you because they would feel as though you are uh okay there's got to be a word for this but um they would just feel as though you're talking down to them or something so it would only be it would only be a situation that uh somebody would have to come to me and say you know i hear you're really into stocks you know i'm really interested um you know would you mind talking to me? And then I would have to fill them up with a bunch of disclaimers, you know, that I would not want to give them direct advice. You know, I'm not trained to do that. Bloody, 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 bloody. But, you know, you know, if they would, if they would want to know a few things that I know, then I would talk to them. Um, and only if they came to me like that um, would I be comfortable with talking to them because a lot of people would feel like, oh, you really think you're hot stuff, don't you? Um, but kind of going full circle here, if we're talking about relationships and trying to be happy I can certainly say that um, uh, you know uh, having you know having money in the bank certainly does nothing towards bringing happiness that's one thing <laughs> 
you can take that to the bank. Um, so, uh, yeah. So I don't know what I'm looking for. Um, and I have a bad attitude when it comes to the literal when I, okay so to say literally i'm looking for love to some people that's that's almost like saying i'm looking to win the lottery um so I've got my finances. I've I've won the lottery. Okay, so that's and that did not bring me happiness, okay? So next I'm you know, if this is why I don't have any confidence in I'm looking for love. Um Let's say that somebody comes along tomorrow that is a much, much, much better fit, you know, so I can check that box, you know, you know, say financial security, check. Looking for love, check. Does that bring me happiness? Uh, certainly much closer. But I think there is one box that I need to check off. And I first need to figure out what that, I need to figure out what the label for that box actually is. Um, I think it has something to do with a project, a mission in life, maybe a new location. Maybe I would be happier living someplace else, living in the West. Maybe I would be happier living in a 55 plus golf course community with a larger uh, ability to socialize with a lot of friends. Um, I have felt pretty isolated and secluded lately. Um, you know, maybe I need to do something that is, is very far out of, I'm not sure if it would be my comfort zone or just something that I just haven't thought about ever trying to do and I don't know whether it's a matter of a level of difficulty or just simply because I just haven't ever really thought about doing it um, um, now I don't think it would be something like writing a book because that's a uh, secluded activity I think that I'm really craving something social so um, I think that my next thing that I'm looking for is something to do with uh, women friends and maybe couple coupled coupled up friends. Um, so if I were to find the love of my life, um, remain financially secure, that's not going to get me there. Um, there's, let's say, let's look at it like a stool, a stool with three legs. Um, I'm not going to be sitting stable for very long on a two-legged stool. So, um, 
Yeah. I, I, I need to have a social network um, live and in person um, in addition to the love of my life and being able to do what I want to do when I want to do it. Um, in my case, it means that I have my own personal finances. Um, uh, it doesn't, it doesn't always necessarily mean that, uh, for some people, the ability to, shoot, um, Um, having freedom uh, could mean that um, people are always willing to sponsor you or donate to you. I mean, some of the uh, YouTube stars have been able to get spon sponsorships or donations or GoFundMe things. Uh, so... Um, so it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to have your own personal nest egg. It just means that somehow or another, um, uh, you manage to have the ability to do what you want to do when you want to do it, however that is, whether it's gifts, whether it's sponsorships, whether whether you somehow can travel cheap or um, or your interests are just cheap, like you like to hike or, um, or things like that. So, um, so yeah, um, I think I mentioned that we're probably going to all look back in maybe five years on what this pandemic taught taught us and I think a lot of people will have gone through a lot of changes in their lives during this period of time and they they I think a lot of people will have moved changed jobs quit jobs started businesses and done a lot of changing during this time so um so, okay, that's all. This has been a long, long one. It always, always seems to be. So, uh, hopefully, um, my face won't keep on popping up here. Hopefully, we will get some new, fresh faces to show up and maybe get some response videos and some different topics and uh, that would be really really neat to get something like this going so alrighty thank you and good night goodbye